contradiction in reality. Okay? So that's the basics of metaphysics, of the object objectivist view of reality in general. So that takes us to the second part of the objectivist philosophy, the, uh, the second part being epistemology, the study of knowledge and learning. And back to that single word or phrase that objectivism uses, uh, epistemology, from an objectivist standpoint, can be stated simply as reason. And uh, rather than try and flesh out reason, you'll see that I will build up to it shortly. So instead, I'm going to come back to that one other thing I've referred to several times while talking about metaphysics. I'm going to come back to consciousness. I remember I was talking about people are conscious of things, and that doesn't matter as far as existence is concerned, because existence is independent of whether or not I'm looking at it or can hear it or can touch it. But um, what is consciousness then? Well, it is simply, according to objectivism, the faculty of perceiving things that exist. It's the thing that allows me to see or feel something and be able to process what that thing is. And I have uh, another quote here for this. This is from Atlas Shrugged. If you don't know what that book is, Atlas Shrugged is considered um, the objectivist masterpiece, Ayn Rand's masterpiece, or Ayn Rand, depending upon how you pronounce that. Um, and in particular, it comes from Galt's speech within that book. And here it says, existence exists, and the act of grasping that statement just grasping that statement implies two corollary axioms, that something exists which one perceives, and that one exists possessing consciousness, consciousness being the faculty of perceiving that which exists. Whatever your degree of knowledge, these two, existence and consciousness, are actions you cannot escape. These two are the irreducible primaries implied in any action you undertake. Existence is identity. Right, coming back to the law of identity as a corollary said earlier, but then following that it says consciousness is identification. And the process of identification uh, is definitely encapsulated within reason. Again, I'll come back to reason shortly. So that is how objectivists define consciousness. And it's important to understand that consciousness, like existence, is treated as an axiom. It is an irreducible primary. And Rand would argue um, that, for example, to argue against consciousness, that we would have this problem that's kind of laid out within the, the quotation here, that something exists for me to be aware of to ultimately get to the idea and understanding of what consciousness is. So to argue against something means that I'm already conscious of something and implies that I can be conscious, and that there is consciousness, and something to be conscious of. Um, to state this more specifically, um, Rand actually coined a phrase to refer to that problem, that cyclical problem. Uh, and she calls it the fallacy of stolen concept. She says that to argue that existence or consciousness does not exist is, quote, blanking out the fact that proof presupposes existence, consciousness, and a complex chain of knowledge. The existence of something to know, of a consciousness able to know it, and of a knowledge that is learned to distinguish between such concepts as the proved and the unproved. So we have to presuppose these things in order to argue about them in the first place, which is why objectivism says, well, we're just not going to argue about them. They simply are the axioms that we build upon, the things that we assume and use to build from them. Now, moving from existence and consciousness, the next question is, well, how do we take existence and our consciousness of existence in order to get to knowledge. How do we learn things? How do we retain things? And uh, objectivism holds that reason is how we learn things and obtain things uh, for our knowledge sake. It rejects other systems um, that people have claimed will bring knowledge. It rejects mystic mysticism 
it rejects skepticism, it rejects intuition, uh, all of these other systems. It says that reason uh, is not only a means, it says that reason is the only means of knowledge. If you'll turn the page, we have a quote here from Peacock again about this. And here Peacock lays out uh, the components of reason, the pieces of reason that we use. He says, the senses, concepts, logic. These are the elements of man's rational faculty. It start, its form, its method. In essence, follow reason means base knowledge on observation. Form concepts according to the actual measurable relationships among concretes. Use concepts according to the rules of logic, ultimately the law of identity. Since each of these elements is based on the facts of reality, the conclusions reached by a process of reason are objective. So here Peacock shows us what reason is and the three components of reason. And so let's talk about those components and build up our sense of reason uh, from an objectivist standpoint. So first we have our senses, our seeing, our hearing, our touch, right? Things that are our senses. And our senses allow us to perceive the world. I can get a sense of things that are in existence uh, and be able to, at the beginning, start to simply identify them and differentiate them maybe from one another. Uh, at a very, very rudimentary level. So, here, okay, I perceive this thing. It's silver, it's metal, it's pointy, it's kind of long. You know, I can look at it and figure out its properties by looking at it. It's kind of hard. I can tell that by feeling it, by touching it, etc. Okay? Next, after we have our senses, Objectivism says we then move to concepts. And a concept is a product of man's consciousness. It's a way that man organizes the things that he perceives. So ultimately, coming back to this thing and all of its little properties, ultimately I can create a concept of these kinds of things, right? And I can say that when I look at these, well, I, these seem to be like so that's different. So my concept here is this is a fork, right? Very simple, straightforward. And it's a, a process of identification and differentiation that we use to create our concepts. And ultimately, that identification and differentiation is how we organize our thoughts. Uh, I have a quote to help us uh, understand this a little bit better. So. This is from the book Introduction to Objectivist Epistemology. Rand wrote this herself. It says, none of the traditional theories of concepts regards concepts as objective, i.e. as neither revealed nor invented, but as produced by man's consciousness in accordance with the facts of reality, as mental integrations of factual data computed by men, as the products of a cognitive method of classification whose processes must be performed by man but whose content is dictated by reality. So man produces these concepts, these concepts that reflect and come from existence, right? Back to that, uh, to that existence fundamental base. And then once we form concepts of things, like I have my concept of a fork, then we can begin to use logic. And logic is, um, the process of non-contradictory identification is how objectivism defines logic. And to demonstrate this a little bit, so I can say that I begin to have concepts of things, right? First I have the concept, like I said, of the fork. And then I have this thing, and I can look at it and say, well, that's, that's not a fork. It's certainly not a fork. Um, but I can say that these things, oddly enough, as I look at these things, are kind of all alike in some interesting ways and very different from this thing. So I can then get an abstract idea, and that abstract idea I will call these are utensils. And then we build on these kinds of things. And I can say that, you know, by looking at this, I can say that all 
Utensils are all the table. If it is a utensil, then it's on the table. Right? And then I can say, well, 